Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Redden and this is an episode of Cake Rescue where we take cake fails from across the internet and show you how to rescue them. Let's jump right in with this failed Thomas cake. Firstly, let's recreate the fail. It is roughly the right shape, but the frosting is just slapped on all over it and applied rather strangely. That looks about right. At this point you have two options. One is to smooth out all the frosting using some acetate. Using the acetate just makes it easy to smooth out the bits that are rounded and then you can just use a knife to do any bits that are straight. But once you've done that you're going to need to add all of the fondant details to the cake. Now I already have a tutorial if you want to make a really detailed Thomas the Tank Engine but given that this is a rescue I just don't think you're going to have time to make all those details and put them on. So I'm pretending that the party guests are arriving soon so instead of doing that we're going to cut the cake in half and tip it over onto its side so that it covers more of the cake board and don't worry about it being all different heights that will be totally fine. Next add some yellow food colouring to any leftover frosting in the bowl and mix that in to make it green. Then apply that onto the cake. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. You can have it looking quite messy. I'm just trying to get rid of the blue Thomas colour and make it more of a greeny colour. Grab some coconut and add in some green food colouring and mix that through. You don't need gel food colouring for this, just your cheap liquid colour will do. And keep stirring it and pushing it down with the back of your spoon to spread that colour out into your coconut. If it's not spreading enough you can add a couple of tablespoons of water that will help just to mix it all through. Spoon that onto your cake and when you get to the sides just hover your hand just next to the cake and then pour the coconut into the gap and press it on. Add some chocolate biscuits for the track and a strip of licorice across the top. Now I've heated this licorice up in the microwave just for five seconds, no longer than that. I'm just making it slightly warm so that it's more flexible and so that when it goes onto the biscuits it melts the chocolate slightly and that means once that chocolate sets it's going to hold it all in place. Then you can add a Thomas toy on top and we've gone from this to something that you can put on the party table and the kids will love it. Next we have a Peppa Pig cake that the person has uploaded and tagged it as a fail. Now there are two secrets to remember when you're making fondant decorations for a cake. One is that they take quite a long time to make. You're basically making a 3D artwork and that is going to take quite a lot of your time to make it look good. The second secret you need to remember is they can be made months ahead. So do not leave it until the night before the party. Take the stress out of it and prepare ahead. That way if you're having trouble with your 3D modeling skills you can just try again another day. Or if you really, really can't do it or you don't have the patience to keep trying, then you can just go to the shops and get a toy to go on top instead. Some people really enjoy the creative process and they like making it themselves. But if that's not you, that's okay. You've got other skills and other things that you're great at. This is just a birthday cake. You don't have to make the decorations out of fondant. The other advantage of making them ahead is when you leave it to dry the fondant will harden. So that means you can support it in the position you want it to be and then once it's dried out you can just put it on top of the cake. Next we have expectation and reality for a failed glaze cake. Now glazes are typically used on desserts rather than cakes but you can use it on a cake if you want to. A glaze is made of a sugary syrup usually that has some chocolate or sweetened condensed milk in it and then you add lots of gelatin and you melt that into it. I'll put the recipe for different glazes on the how to cook that website for you in case you want to make one. Now if you make a buttercream covered cake 
and then you pour a room temperature glaze over it. You might get away with it, but you'll end up with a very, very thin layer of glaze because it's just dripping off. The cake is not cold enough to instantly set the gelatin in the glaze. And if you pour on a glaze that's still warm, it's going to melt the buttercream and that's just going to make a mess of your beautiful cake. Falling down, we're falling down, what's happening right now, I think we're falling down. I think we're falling down. There's no easy fix for this. You're going to need to scrape off the glaze, put on a fresh coat of buttercream, and then importantly, put it into the freezer for at least two hours, but preferably overnight. Your glaze should be room temperature, not hot. And when you pour it on, because the cake is now really cold, it can quickly set the gelatin in the glaze. So you end up with a thin, even layer of the glaze over the cake. Now you're gonna to need to store this cake in the fridge until you're ready to serve it. And that glaze will stay perfectly in place just how it is set. Next, so many people emailed me about the Women's Weekly Birthday Cake book. This book is an Aussie classic. More than one million copies of it were sold in Australia back in the 80s. And I even remember as a kid looking through it to choose which birthday cake I wanted each year. One year I had a rabbit cake. In a recent interview though, the editor talked about this, the tip truck cake. Don't make it unless you're really desperate. <laughs> the weight of the top would just break all the cake. Don't go there. Glue the pages together. Forget it. So let's see if we can rescue the cake book. I'm not loving the shape of this tip truck. It's a bit long here in the front. It's almost like they've got a car and put a dump truck on the back of it. So let's change the shape a bit and cover it in buttercream. Now in the book, the truck had four wheels along each side, but the dump trucks that most kids toys are based on only have two axles. So let's simply put two wheels on each side. Then use lollies to decorate. Now all the cakes in this book had no fondant. They were all quite simple. So that's the way I'm keeping this one super simple. If you do want a detailed fondant truck cake, I have one of those. Just search for truck cake Reardon on YouTube and you'll find it. And you can be sure that it actually works because on the website, people have uploaded photos of the cake that they've made using the tutorial and they look amazing. They're really, really good. Back to this cake. Instead of having the tray tipped up, if you keep it flat, it's not going to collapse under the weight of the lollies because we're piling them up. That is quite a lot of extra weight. So now instead of gluing the pages of the book together, you can just swap out the photo for this one. Iconic cake book is rescued. With thanks to my wonderful patrons, here is a list of absolute legends. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you on Friday.